It looks better once all the trim's on. Let me that see. looks really nice. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Well. Oh, you know what? And here we have the closet hangers, <laughs> fully adjustable. Oh, look at Levi made them himself. I'm doing touch-up work all along there. All right, guys, it's Q&A on Tuesday. Probiotics. Those refer to the beneficial bacteria that are technically all over your body, but when people talk about probiotics, they're mostly talking about the ones that are in your digestive tract. So every single nook, cranny, and crevice of your outsides and your insides are absolutely covered in bacteria. To give you some perspective of how much bacteria, you have about 30 trillion human cells in your body, and you have about 100 trillion bacteria living on and in you. That totals about three pounds of pure bacteria. There's a specific strain of bacteria that lives in your belly button. The majority of your poop is dead bacteria. There are species of bacteria in your gut that are absolutely instrumental to the function of your immune system. There are species that break down your thyroid hormones and make them available. There are species that convert the indigestible fiber in the plant foods that you eat into short chain fatty acids, which are then absorbed through your intestine and utilized by your body. And that produces up to 15% of your daily caloric intake. That's almost as much as your brain uses on a daily basis and it's all coming from the bacteria in your gut. We evolved with a rich, diverse community of bacteria on and in us, and so we need that rich, diverse, prolific community of bacteria in order to be healthy. So it's definitely a problem when we disrupt or destroy these communities by use of antibiotics, by use of oral contraceptive pills, pain pills, by eating terrible diets that do not feed our bacteria properly, and even by cleansing activities like fasting and colonics. For our digestive tracts to be healthy and to retain their ability to selectively absorb macronutrients as well as vitamins and minerals, they absolutely positively require the bacteria that they evolved with. But if you're like most people, you have essentially destroyed the community of bacteria in your digestive tract. I know I was on antibiotics pretty much constantly when I was a kid due to chronic sinus and ear infections. I know that I took the oral contraceptive pill for most of my adolescence and early adulthood. I know that I regularly took painkillers. I know that I was chronically constipated for most of my early life. If you have taken antibiotics, if you've ever taken the oral contraceptive pill, if you've regularly taken painkillers like ibuprofen, Advil, Tylenol, Aleve, if you've ever suffered from digestive distress like constipation or diarrhea, if you've ever had food poisoning, or if you simply grew up eating a diet rich in animal foods and processed garbage, then your gut bacteria desperately need help. It can be really difficult to control pathogenic bacteria once it's already in the intestines. Even if you get it mostly under control, they can find one little nook or cranny and they can survive there with a few tens of thousands of individual bacterias and they can stay there until the conditions are just right for them to come back out and thrive. They're waiting for the KFC. And it can be equally as difficult to reintroduce the good beneficial bacteria once your gut is already overrun by pathogenic bacteria. If they don't have a place to go and they don't have food to eat, they can't survive there. So this is why probiotic supplementation is essential for, for a lot of people. The general rule that I was taught is to take a daily high potency, high quality, broad spectrum probiotic one month for every one year of digestive tract abuse. 
So I was on antibiotics for most of my childhood. I was on the pill for most of my adolescence. I ate a terrible diet up until I was about 19 years old. So that probably puts me at a total of 17 years of digestive abuse. So that would equal 17 months of probiotic supplementation. Hopefully not everyone's health was as consistently awful as mine was. So I would hope that it would be like less than six months of supplementation for most people. When you do get a probiotic though, get the probiotic with as many billions of probiotics as you can possibly find. And make sure that those billions of probiotics are coming from at least 10 different strains of lactobacilli and bifida. Also, you have to change your diet to a whole food, plant-based, and at least predominantly vegan diet if you're going to get your gut microbiome healthy. This type of diet is the only lifestyle change that has ever been shown to guarantee a shift in the proportion of pathogenic to good bacteria in your gut. And that positive balance is only maintained as long as your diet is maintained. Which brings us to the tricky part because most probiotic supplements are in fact not vegan. Most contain dairy and many more have cultures that were grown in a dairy medium and then all of the dairy was removed before the cultures were taken and put in the probiotic. There are some manufacturers of probiotics that say that they grow their cultures on a medium that does not contain any dairy, so these products are technically purely vegan. Unfortunately, I have only been able to find those products on the internet, not in my local stores, and some of them are freeze-dried or otherwise controlled so that they don't need refrigeration. Now, what I was taught was that probiotics that do not require refrigeration or have been freeze-dried have not been proven to be viable and oftentimes their potency is too low to be able to affect significant change. Which leaves you in a bit of a predicament because you do need to make sure that you get a supplement that is high enough potency and high enough quality that it's going to actually affect your gut health. Here in Hawaii, my local health food store does not carry the product that guarantees that their cultures were not grown in a dairy medium. And so this is actually one of the very few times that I will put my health before my staunch veganism and actually take the supplement that has probably been grown using dairy. Feel free to think less of me, but as a plant-based, predominantly vegan person in the public eye, I have a responsibility to be a healthy motherfucker. And to be the healthy motherfucker that I knew I could be, I needed to be taking a high potency, high quality probiotic, and I needed that probiotic consistently and guaranteed to have the number of strains and number of cultures that I needed. So I took the probiotic that I knew would be best, and I didn't necessarily worry about whether or not it was strictly vegan. And when I was done with my supplementation time, I stopped taking it. I haven't taken a probiotic regularly for almost a year, and since I have maintained an optimal diet, my digestion is still amazing, my health and my skin is great, I still have plenty of energy, I feel like my thyroid is functioning really well, and my immunity is honestly just better than it's ever been. So since I maintain a diet, I no longer supplement with probiotics. Once you get it established and once you maintain that diet, you do not need to continue supplementing. Don't waste your money. I have no plans to take probiotics again in the future, but if it comes up that I have to take antibiotics at some point, or if I get, say, like food poisoning from contaminated sprouts or something like that, then I will do another round of probiotic supplementation, probably for like 30 to 60 days, just to reset my gut. My recommendation is to find a consistent source of high potency, broad spectrum probiotic. If that means that you can get a hold of a certified vegan refrigerated probiotic, then fucking awesome. If that's not available in your area, then I'm not gonna get on you about taking a product that is not certified vegan, but you need to get a good product. You can't go shopping at Walgreens for a good probiotic, okay? You need to go to like a health food store or something because the stuff in most drugstores is absolute positive crap.
and I do highly recommend taking a pill instead of trying to get your probiotics from fermented foods and such because going through the digestive tract and the highly acidic stomach, you can't guarantee how many probiotics do make it through into your intestines, nor can the fermentation be guaranteed as to which strains are in it and how many strains are in it. So when you're dealing with something as honestly delicate as your gut microbiome, I want you to go for consistent, guaranteed probiotic amounts. You get that through a pill that is delivered straight to your intestines, no more questions asked. Once you're done with your probiotic supplementation, you need to maintain that awesome diet. And then if you want to include fermented foods, awesome do it. All right, I hope that has answered some of your questions. I am now on my way to the gym, and yes, one day I will do a gym video where I film myself working out and I show you guys my awesome butt workout. Because I'm not gonna lie, I have this butt game down. I have it down good. But anyway, I'll see you guys later. Happy tunes. Hi. Ah. You can have some lunch with me. I'm having lunch. I'm gonna have some citrus. Now my client has been giving me oranges for like the last three months. I'm sorry about the um, nail gun there going off. But my client has been giving me oranges for about three months and I have been stockpiling them because when she first gave them to me they were kind of sour and not great. So my secret with citrus is that I let it sit for a couple of months and yes you'll you'll lose some of them to um molding and such but the ones that stick around become like really juicy and super sweet and actually edible so you swallow it whole i'm kind of jealous of the girl's closet look at this obviously not done yet but it's so cute Rice bowls. It's not for you to tune ya. We're having rice bowls and it's white rice today. Usually brown rice, but every now and then. Oh, thanks, girl. And I'm having a big salad, which I'll probably share a little bit with Levi. Uh, kale with some nutritional yeast and a little bit of Bragg's put on it because otherwise I just can't stand the taste of kale. Do you want to say goodnight to the peoples? Good night, guys. Good night, peoples. Hope you all have a lovely evening. <laughs>